Good morning, Pathfinder Church. Good morning. We are here in God's presence. Let's stand up and worship the Lord together. Welcome to Pathfinder Church and welcome to this time 
of worship. It's good to see all you here today. We come here to be together and to be in God's presence and to worship him and to sing, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Those words come from Psalm 103. It says this, Praise the Lord, my soul, and all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord. The song we just sang was called 10,000 Reasons, and it's called that because there's a line in the song that says, My heart will find 10,000 reasons to bless the Lord. And I wonder if we can do that this morning, if we can find 10,000 reasons to worship God. I think that's easy to do because if you look back on your life and look back at how many times God has been faithful, if you try to count that, how many times God has sustained you, brought you through things? How many times God has shown his goodness to you? I think it's easy to count the number of times. We could probably get to 10,000 reasons why we should worship God's majesty and 10,000 reasons why we should sing of the goodness of God. We're going to continue to do that now. We're going to continue to worship the Lord. For those of you joining us online, we welcome you. And please leave a comment below on Facebook to let us know you're here. Let's all go before God now and worship the Lord. Let's sing. Majesty, worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. darkest night 
You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. So, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after running after me with my life laid down surrender now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down surrendered now i give you everything your goodness is running it keeps running after me all my life you have been All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Amen. Please have a seat. Good morning, beloved. Good morning to all you who are watching online. Good morning to all of you who are at family camp. Folks, I don't know if you know it, but we've got 24 families. Well, we had 24. My family left. <laughs> Uh, we had 24 families up at family camp this uh, weekend, uh, this week, I should say, uh, over 60 people. So several of them are still up there this morning and are getting ready to pack up and come home. Uh, I'm Brother Don. If you're visiting here with us, uh, I'm one of the pastors here, and I've got your announcements or, or what's happening in the life of the church uh, for this morning. So let's, uh, let's take a look. First thing we have is donate blood. Don't forget Saturday, August 5th from 10 a.m. to 345 uh, please make an appointment by going online to the Red Cross, redcrossblood.org and, and use the sponsor code PATHFINDER. And even if you can't be here that day, you can still use that code and get, get credit for it. Uh, so you can do that if you have to do it on a different day as well. So don't forget about that. All right? PATHFINDER at the movies. I'm really excited about this, folks. Starting next Friday night. Okay? Next Friday night. 6.30, the doors were open, 7 o'clock, right here in the sanctuary. We'll be showing a movie. The first movie is Up. It is a family-friendly movie, purposefully, so that you can bring all the kids, your neighbor's kids, everybody else, but it's for everybody, not just the children, okay? Because on Sunday morning, I'm going to be preaching about an aspect of that movie. So please come Friday night, starting this coming Friday night, and then we will preach on it Saturday morning. We'll do that all through the month of August. Every Friday night we'll have a movie, family-friendly, and then Sunday morning we'll be preaching on some aspect of that, of that movie. Okay? 
Pizza with the Pastor, August 6th, so that's next Sunday. So if you want to meet with me and some of the other staff and just get to know us a little bit better, get to know uh, uh, some of the ministries of the church a little bit better, um, please uh, do come be a part of that. It'll be immediately following the second service next Sunday. However, please, RSVP so we know how much pizza to, to order and if we're going to order any, because right now I don't have anybody RSVP'd. So make sure you sign up at the Connect desk and let us know, or call the church office and let us know sometime during the week. Pizza with the pastor. Uh, volunteers needed for God's special people camp. This camp is near and dear to my heart. Uh, the rights, where are the rights? Are they down? Oh, there they are. There, uh, Jerry and Sue Wright, uh, leaders of that camp, or a good part of that camp, uh, and um, they reach out to kids with special needs and adults with special needs. So they have they run the gamut, teenagers all the way to people in their 60s, right? Uh, show up for camp. Uh, so we need some help, specifically on the first day, August 12th, right, from about 2.30 to 4.30 to help register people, to show them around, get them familiar with the camp, those kinds of things. So if you're able to do that, please sign up at the Connect Desk. Um, I will be there that day, and I hope some of you will be too. Is that all I got? That's all we got. Listen, um, I want to say one more thing um, before I invite the children up here. Um, and this really belongs to Pastor Ron's uh, prayer time, but um, my heart was hurting this week because I lost a very, very dear friend. Um, Lori Williams went to be with the Lord on Monday, and um, I know she's with the Lord because she's a great godly woman, um, but it was very unexpected. Lori and I are the exact same age, and that always makes you stop and pause. Um, but she went to be with the Lord Monday night, and um, there'll be more. We'll put out, uh, we'll put out some information tomorrow about uh, time for her service and so on. It'll be this coming Thursday. So I just wanted to let you know that my heart's a little hurt this year, this week. All right? So now, children, come on, Victoria. I know you, you promised me you'd come up here. Come on. At a girl. Hey, and there's Grayson. Come on. There we go. Here we go. Hey, they're coming in droves now. Look at that. Look at that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming up. So, so Miss Christina has been teaching you all songs, camp songs, right, um, all month long. So I figured I'd, I'd finish with one of my favorite ones. Okay, and, and Miss Christina is off at camp right now, uh, so she, um, she sends her regards and tells you how much she loves you, loves you all, but I want to sing a song. I want us to sing a song, and I know some of you out there know it, so if you wouldn't mind helping us, okay? This is a song I learned when I was your age, Emmett. I learned this song a long, long time ago, and I want to tell you a little bit about this song. It is what they call an Afro-American spirituality song, Okay? Uh, and it was, um, the first time we noticed it in the world was on the islands off of Georgia and South Carolina, okay? Uh, that's when uh, folks were singing it on the plantations. And so we want to sing it uh, this morning and honor those folks, and more importantly, honor God with that song. So the song, uh, there's some funny words to it. It says, kum ba ya. Can you say that? Kum ba ya, Okay. Kum ya means come by here. Come by here. So what you're asking when you sing the song is for the Lord to come here. Okay? So the song goes like this. And, and those of you who know it, sing it with me, please. Kum ya, my Lord. Kum ya. Kum ya, my Lord. Kum ya. Kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya, oh Lord, kumbaya. So kumbaya, come by here, Lord. They're asking the Lord to join them, okay? And then they would sing many different things, like, someone's praying, Lord, kumbaya, Someone's praying, Lord, kumbaya. Come on, y'all sing. 
Someone's praying, Lord, kumbaya. Oh, Lord, kumbaya. And you could even sing it like in sad times too, right? So, someone's crying, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's crying, Lord, kumbaya. Someone's crying, Lord, kumbaya. Oh, Lord, kumbaya. So, if you're sad, or even if you're happy, it's okay if you're happy too, right? Or if you're not sure, or you're frustrated, or you're angry, or whatever's going on in your life, you can just say to Lord, Kumbaya. Come by here, Lord. Please come be with me. Okay? You like that? Can you think you can remember those three words? Kumbaya. Say it again. Kumbaya. Very good. Excellent. 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 All right. Shall we pray? All right. So you repeat after me. Okay? We're going to pray to the Lord. Okay? Dear Lord, kumbaya, please come by here and be with us all the day long. Amen. All right, y'all are dismissed to children's time. Thank you very much. Thank you for being brave and coming up. And thank you all for singing with me. So we got a little bit of music trivia there about Kumbaya. I'll give you another piece of music trivia. It's got nothing to do with what we're about to do, but just out of curiosity, the second song we sang this morning was Majesty, Worship His Majesty. Many of us know it. It is a, certainly a, 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 a hymn, that, a little song that we enjoy around here. It was composed by a man named Jack Hayford. He uh, was a wonderful pastor. He uh, went to be with Jesus in January of this year. Uh, and he composed over 600 hymns and songs like uh, Majesty. Majesty is actually one of the top 100 contemporary hymns of all times. Now, you didn't know that maybe, but now you do. Now I'll tell you why you should give in the offering. <laughs> That's the other way I don't do a segue. <laughs> I, I just wanted to tell you about Majesty because it's like... <laughs> Here's why you want to give to the offering, why you want to be a part of it. Because if there's one thing that we hear all around us in the world all our life long is something to this effect, there are many variations on the phrase, somebody needs to do something about that. We complain, we bemoan, we cry out, someone do something. Politicians make promises, celebrities make money doing something. What about us? What can we do? What can we do that God could use to really do what needs to be done? Well, the most important thing is give your life to Jesus. And then out of that, give the offering. Keep this church alive, healthy, and strong, and that this church stands with all of the other places where God is worshipped. And that that offering, combined with somebody else's offering, does great things. The ushers are going to come and receive your offering so you can do something.
please stand? Join me in prayer as we ask God's blessing upon our giving. Oh God, what we give is meaningless and can do nothing on our own. But when we give it to you, when we give out of our heart, we give out of our, our thankfulness to you that you have provided for us everything that we need and even given us more than we need so much. The blessings are beyond 10,000. But when we give our gift, we give it to you out of that heart. You are able to do great things. God bless our church. God bless your ministry here and wherever the name of Jesus is lifted up. We give you our thanks. In his name, amen. amen. Please sing with me. Christian living, taken out of the book of James. That's what we've been talking about all month long, Christian living. And today, today we're going to talk about courageous patience. Courageous patience. And it's taken from chapter 5. We're in the final chapter 
of the book of James, chapter 5, verses 7 through 11. Hear this word from God. Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. But you too must be patient. Take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. For examples of patience and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance. You can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end. For the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God God indeed. Uh, You do have some fill in the blanks for those of you who enjoy doing that in your bulletin on the front page. So you might want to follow along there. Uh, Our theme for today is this. Strengthen your hearts. Strengthen your hearts for the days ahead. Okay? That's what I want you to think about this morning. And this morning is our final session in the epistle of James uh, to the general church. His goal has been to encourage us to live a Christian life and to emulate Jesus in all that we do. That's been his goal all along. James realizes that this is not an easy task uh, before us, and, and we will struggle And we will sometimes fail. We will not always be the Christians we ought to be. He also recognizes that the world, remember that word from last week, cosmos, the world, which is, you know, remember how we defined that, that was, you know, all that was under Satan's control, right? Uh, That the world we live in will not always be kind to us as Christians. So in this last installment, James calls us to courageous patience. Courageous patience. And again, it's appropriate to review where we have been so that we might know where we are going. We used to have a pastor who said something like that around here, right? Right. So far we have this, been reminded that we cannot just be hearers of the word, but we must be doers as well. Okay. Can't just hear, can't just sit and learn. We've got to do. We must apply what we learn and what we read in the scriptures. There are no pew sitters allowed. Christy, Christy goes to get up and says, no pew sitters allowed. Good girl. Right? No pew sitters allowed. We've got to act on what we learn. Okay? And then we were encouraged to show forth our faith. Show forth our faith. No works do not bring us salvation. Got to be clear about this. Works do not bring us salvation. However, works, good works, are an outflowing, an outpouring of the joy we have in our hearts because of our salvation. If we never bear any fruit for the kingdom, are we really saved? Now, there's a question for us to ask ourselves. If we never bear any fruit for the kingdom, are we really saved? Third thing we learned. Then we were admonished to tame our tongues. You know, as Christians, we are called to watch what we say. The only things that should be coming out of our mouths, and and remember, It's not really the tongue that's the problem. It's what wells up from within us, from within our heart, within our minds, within our thinking. The only thing that should be coming out of our mouths is praise to God and encouragement for others. And we fail at that miserably. I fail at that miserably. But that's that's the goal, right? And then last week, we heard a most concerning admonition to avoid friendship with the world. In fact, James got right up into our grill, as they say, or into our faces, and he declared that friendship with the world amounts to being an enemy of God. Whew, tough words. Friendship with the world amounts to being an enemy of God. And all of these points are essential for us to live a proper, holy, loving life in Christ. This morning, James adds a couple more lifestyle encouragements, if you will, for us, We're going to talk about this idea of courageous patience, for which James also calls strengthening your heart, and and a little bit more about judgmentalism. We've already talked about that some, but we'll add a little bit more. 
So friends, where and how have you had to show some courageous patience? Where and how has this church had to show some courageous patience? But as you as individuals as well. So, you know, I just started thinking about some of the ways that, that courageous patience has had to, had to occur in our lives. And so here's some that I thought of. I think about that mama, and I've had several mamas say this to me, right, who have been praying for their wayward child or perhaps for, for perhaps decades they've been praying for them. That's one, you know, courageous patience, right? Trying to love that child, trying to pray for that child, and, you know, for just forever. It seems like forever. Maybe you've been waiting for that job offer so that you can go on with the plan you've been laid, that you've laid out for your life, right? You're waiting for a job offer, okay? Could it be that you're marching toward that retirement date and, and longing for that day? Or maybe you just got there and you're, you're looking at, well, now what do I do? Look, Linda's back there going, yeah. <laughs> right? Or maybe you're marching towards graduation, or maybe you're marching towards your wedding day, whatever, whatever that is for you, right? Suppose you are expecting God to share with you his plan for your life. God, what you got? I'm waiting. What you got? Perhaps you, or you have or are sitting tight on test results and hoping for a favorable diagnosis. Or maybe you're waiting on recovery that seems to be taking way longer than you expected it to, right? Perchance you are patiently anticipating when that little bundle of joy will decide to join you in this world. I know we've got at least one of those waiting in our church, right? And I'm sure there are grandmas and grandpas who are waiting as well. Maybe you are hopefully imagining the day that bully at school or at work or maybe even in church will wake up to the ideal of being nice and kind. Right? You might be courageously waiting on that moment when your loved one will join our Lord and Savior in eternity. Or maybe you are wondering when God will call you home. I've had people say that to me. Not sure why I'm still here, Brother Don, but God hadn't called me home yet. Maybe you're courageously, patiently waiting. Right. And I venture to guess that you can think of many more ideas on this thought that pertain to your life, you know, specifically or particularly. So, you know, whatever that may, how, whatever may apply to your life, I want you to be thinking about that at this point. All right. So let's see what God has to say about all this via the Epistle of James. And the first thing He says is this: Take courage. Take courage. Verse eight: You too must be patient. Take courage. For the coming of the Lord is near. So context, I, you know, I, I, I know I browbeat this constantly, but context is extremely important. So let's talk about the context in which James is writing uh, this particular letter in these particular words and what he's trying to say to his listeners as well as to us, you know, almost 2,000 years after it's written. In the first six verses, and, and they were not included in our text, so you're going to have to go back and look at them yourself, in the first six verses of chapter 5 of James, uh, James is taking up a diatribe uh, against the wicked rich, okay? primarily unbelieving wealthy persons, and he chastises them for their treatment of the poorer persons of the world, and, and in particular, poor believers, right? Uh, and the details of which I'm not going to go into detail today, I'll leave that to your further study. Uh, in your next steps for today, portion of the bulletin, it's, it's included in there for you to read. Okay, so, so take a look at that. But suffice it to say, uh, James has been talking to these very wealthy unbelievers primarily about their attitudes and their treatment of the poor, which included a lot of the believers. Now in our text, James begins to address the poor, that is the believers, who have been the victims of these wealthy persons and again, as I said, specifically the believing poor. Okay? He's trying to encourage them to be patient and more specifically not to attempt to get even for what has been done to them. James is encouraging self-restraint in our response to the world and its treatment toward us. That's what he's, he's encouraging his readers and, and then by virtue of us reading it all these years later, he's encouraging us to show restraint. 
in our response to the way the world has treated us. And he encourages his readers, thereby as us, to be patient until the Lord comes again. Now, I don't know what James was thinking when he wrote those words. You know, he was thinking maybe the Lord would be back soon, you know, next two or three years, you know, two weeks, whatever. Here we are at 2,000 years, and we're still waiting. So for me, what that says is we're in this for the long haul, friends. So we've got to be patient, courageously patient, for the long haul, okay? James first uses the example of a farmer, And at first, when I read that, I'm like, a farmer? Really? I don't know about you, but I never really thought about a farmer being courageously patient. But then when you really start to think about it, it really kind of makes sense. You know? Uh, The metaphor fits quite nicely. In the ancient days, again, we'll talk about the ancient... In the ancient days of Palestine, the early rains came in October and November... And so they planted the grain just before that. Okay? They would sow the grain into the, into the ground just before the October, November rains. Okay? And then the late rains, those were the early rains. The late rains came in April and May just as the grain was starting to really mature. Right? And in those days, the, the ideal of hot houses, you know, we got hot houses all over the world now where they grow crops all year round, but, but they didn't exist back then. And the ideal of extensive irrigation, they might have had a little bit, but not extensive irrigation, those really were not in play much. So the farmer had to con- uh, courageously and patiently await for the rains to bring forth the crops. He had to wait on the rains in order to do that. Both rainy seasons were necessary for a successful crop, and that's why James uses them as an example. Everybody would have understood this. The farmer's life depended on the rains and being courageous about patiently waiting for them, as did the lives of those to whom the farmer sold his crops. So this gives us our first fill-in-the-blank, If you, like I said, if you do those things, right? Have the courage of a... Farmer, absolutely. Frank Lurkey would love this statement. Linda Depta's back there shaking her head. She grew up on a farm. All right? So have the courage of a farmer. And as usual, uh, you know, I just love the original languages, going back and looking at the original languages, because there's something more hidden in the language that James uses that is important as well. The words that are translated in our New Living Translation version as take courage, right, have also been translated in other versions as stand firm, establish yourself, don't give up, so on and so forth. Uh, The phrase James uses here is this in the Greek, styrixate tas kardias hymon. I hope I pronounced that right. Styrixate tas kardias Cardias Himon. It literally, literally translated means strengthen the hearts of you. Okay, so if you, if you just translate that straight, strengthen the hearts of you. In English, we would say strengthen your hearts. Okay, strengthen your hearts. And that's what he's saying here. James is calling the people of the church to stand firm in the face of oppression by the wealthy unbelievers in, in the case of him. Uh, and while we are not in the same situation, as James's original audience, the encouragement can still apply for us. And that's why our theme for this sermon is strengthen your hearts. Okay? It's taken right out of the text again. All right? In my humble opinion, and you can take this for what it's worth, in my humble opinion, the world is coming after our church. And I don't just mean our church, I mean the church. Okay? And we need to stand firm to strengthen our hearts for the days ahead. Okay? But at the same time, but at the same time, James gives us another admonition, right? Strengthen your hearts, but don't grumble. (laughs) Darn it. (laughs) Darn it. Right? At the same time, we must also be Christian in our response. So James warns us, don't grumble. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. Ooh. 
Ouch. The believers are to be patient towards both outsiders who are oppressing them and insiders who irritate them. And once again, there's a hidden meaning in the Greek that James uses. Stenazete. Stenazete. Which we translated as grumble, commonly in the Greek meant to sigh or to groan. <sighs> oh. Ah. So, this is really important for us to grasp. Okay? What James prohibits here is not the outward loud and bitter denunciation of others, which is prohibited, but the unexpressed feeling of bitterness or the smothered resentment that may express itself in a groan or a sigh. He speaks more about the inner distress than he does the open complaint, and both are inappropriate. He's speaking about what is in our hearts. And as difficult as this may be, we must respond to the world with Christian love and patience, not only outwardly, but deep within our hearts as well. When I taught the Bible study on Wednesday, talking about this text, one of the folks in the study said, but can't we just dislike them in in our hearts Otherwise, warns James, judgment will be forthcoming. And he's not talking about judgment against those who have been doing the oppressing, although that is certainly on the way, right? But he's talking about believers coming under judgment because we could not control our response in a godly fashion. So here is the the fill-in-the-blank number two. Grumbling results in judgment on us. Judgment on us. Friends, we do not want to come under God's judgment when it comes to responding to what's happening in the greater church. We must be Christian in our dealings for this matter. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So once again, James reiterates his call to courageous patience with a couple more examples. And he says, have the patience of the... He says the prophets in Job. I I just picked one particular prophet, Jeremiah, because it kind of stands out for me. Uh, Here's what he says. For example, examples of patience and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance, you can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end, for the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. And that's actually how we ended this section of the text. So the second example, the first example was the farmer. The second example is that of the prophets that James uses. And I've chosen a particular prophet who stands out to me as one who has been patient in the face of adversity uh, and what's happening in his life. Jeremiah, right, who endured mistreatment by his own people often, Uh, and, And he did so with great patience. So without going into deep detail about the story, Jeremiah comes to the king, he comes to the big city, and he says, y'all don't straighten up. The Babylonians are coming for you. And so here's what, here's what, uh, Jeremiah 22, what happens. So they arrested Jeremiah, the the prophet, and <laughs> had him whipped and put him in stocks at the Benjamin Gate of the Lord's Temple. Now, that was, the, that was the king's prophet who did that in this case, in this particular case. The king's prophet had Jeremiah arrested because the king's prophet was telling the king, everything's hunky-dory, man. It's going to be good. Jeremiah comes along and says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Things are not going to be good. Babylon is on their way, and it ain't going to be pretty. Right? He's trying to tell the truth. So he was arrested and whipped for telling the truth. Right? A little bit later on, literally as Babylon is marching through Judea, right? Here it comes, Jeremiah 32.2. Jerusalem was under siege 
from the Babylonian army, and Jeremiah was imprisoned in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace. Once again, Jeremiah comes. He tries to tell the truth to the king, to the, to the, the leaders, and once again, he's put in prison for sharing God's word of truth to them. And instead of listening to him, you know, they allowed Babylon to march down and start wreaking havoc. And then there's one last one here in 38.6, right? So the officials took Jeremiah from his cell. So he's in a cell. Babylon is literally attacking the city. And they lowered him by ropes into an empty cistern in the prison yard, much like Jesus was lowered into a cistern many years later at the palace of Caiaphas. There was no water in the cistern, but there was thick layer of mud at the bottom, and Jeremiah sank down into it. So here's Jeremiah stuck in this big, thick mud. And of course, you know, they leave him there, and if he stays there, he's just going to starve to death, right? So Jeremiah goes through all of this and never fails to tell God's truth through all of it. He's even thrown into a mud pit to left to die, and yet Jeremiah persisted in his ministry without bitterness or recrimination. He consulted, uh, or he was, he constituted a shining example for believers who are oppressed and mistreated and yet continue to preach God's word over and over again. And then the third example that James uses, because, you know, three is the perfect number, is Job, right? He's the final example that James uses in, in this section of text. And we are all very familiar with Job's story. Uh, I encourage you to go back and read some of it this week. It's part of your follow up. Uh, for you know, the next steps for today again. Everything Job goes through, he boldly, even, you know, after everything he goes through, he lost his, all of his children. He lost his land. He lost his crops. He lost his, even his health. Right? He lost everything. Right? The only thing he didn't lose was his wife. And his wife kept telling him, why don't you just curse God and die? So that's very helpful, honey. Thank you. Right? Why don't you just curse God and die? You know, but after all of that, after all of that, Job says in verses, uh, or chapter 19, verse 25, but as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and he will stand upon the earth at last. I know that my Redeemer lives. And we all know the end of the story of Job, right? God blesses Job extensively. Job 42.10, this is how it ends. When Job prayed for his friends, when Job was obedient to God to pray for his friends, his friends who were misleading him, by the way. When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. And in fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as he ever had before. So that leads us to our third and final fill in the blank, which is this. Endurance results in blessings. Endurance in our faith, courageous patience in our faith, leads to blessings. So what are we to um, do with this word from God? How shall we respond to it? I'm going to give us a few examples. Here's the first one. First and foremost, we must remember who God is. Okay? He is both loving and holy. It is both and, not either or. Okay? If you're just holy, it starts to smack of, I don't even know what the word is, um, religious, religiosity. If you're just loving, it becomes sappy. It's got to be both, holy and loving. We must seek God's holiness just as we seek to be his love in this world. One does not exist without the other. We have to have both. So that's the first thing. Remember who God is. The second thing is our actions throughout this time must be in keeping with God's character and purpose. That is his will for this church and for our lives individually. Pray for our church and for the individuals that make up this body that we might seek his will for us. In all that we do, we need to seek his will. That's the second thing. Here's the third thing. We should not grumble, in parentheses, judge, Right? against one another or those outside of our church. And I will tell you straight up honestly, I have been woefully inadequate in this regards. This text really hit home for me personally, and I have to repent. 
because I have not been kind with things that I have said, and I know it. And so I've had to repent and tell God I was sorry. I hope you will join me. Everything we do must be in God's love for the other in mind. If you do not agree with someone in the church, love them anyway. Treat them with kindness and respect. They are our brothers and sisters after all. If we don't agree with those who are outside the church, treat them with kindness and love anyway because that's what we're called to do as Christians. Okay? Fourth thing is endure patiently. Strengthen your heart. If you're going through any of those issues that I brought up earlier in the sermon or any other that you might have thought of, right, then do so with patient endurance, which is only available through the Holy Spirit, dear friends. If we rely on our own strengths and power, we will fail miserably. We have to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit who resides within every one of us. And ask a brother and sister to help hold you accountable. Never hurts to have someone helping you because you can help them. Friends, we are called to endure patiently. And when we do, it is my firm belief that God will bless us greatly. So strengthen your hearts for the days ahead. God is doing a new thing, and we want to be a part of it. Amen? Amen. Strengthen your hearts, dear friends, for the days ahead. I get to have some fun now. We have taken in about 27 new members this year so far. Yeah. yeah. And I know we've got at least three more, and I'm going to ask them to come on up forward right now. Come on, don't be shy. I know you're all here. Come on up. Oh, come on. I lied. We've got four. Come on, Kathleen. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Right there. Come on. Come on up, guys. 28, 29, 30, 31. Woo! So, I have to ask you all the question, right? Will you be loyal to Jesus Christ? Because that's who we serve. Will you be loyal to Jesus Christ here at Pathfinder Church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and most importantly, maybe, your Christian witness? If you will, will you say, I will? I will. Excellent, excellent. You know what I always say? You know what I say, Kathleen? So let it be written, so let it be done. You know what movie that's from? No. I didn't think so. All right. So let it be written, so let it be done. It's not actually the king, king and I. It's actually the Ten Commandments. All right? You, but it is Yul Brenner. You are now members of Pathfinder Church. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. So you've made a promise to be faithful to Christ. Now it's our turn to make a promise to be faithful not only to Christ, but also to you, to help you grow in your Christian faith and walk, okay? Because none of us have stopped growing in our Christian faith and walk, no matter how old we are or how young we are, okay? None of us stopped growing. So here's our promise. Would you join me, please? We rejoice to recognize you as members of Christ's Holy Church and bid you welcome to Pathfinder Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that surrounded by steadfast love, you may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. That's our promise to you, that we will do everything in our power to help you all grow in your faith walk. Okay? As I said, no matter how far along you are. Amen? Amen. All right. I have certificates for you all. Okay? Don't leave before I give them to you. All right?
All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I never introduced them. Oh, my goodness. You guys got to keep me. You, you know who you are? Jim says he knows who he is. He doesn't. He's not worried about it. And, and they know who I am. So, all right. Let, I'll tell you what. Uh, you guys introduce yourselves. Okay? Be, be brave. Say your name. Oh, I'm Kathleen. Kathleen. Oh, Will Mansky. Will Mansky. Okay. <laughs> Kathleen Will Mansky. Karen Douglas. Douglas. Chester Hammer. And, and these two belong to each other, by the way, <laughs> just so you know. And um, mom and dad were in this church for many years. Um, Steve, or you might have known him as Pete, and Arlene Rapp. So mom and dad were in this church for a long, long time. All right, so one more time. Would you welcome them all, please? Thank you. There it is. Let me share with you the prayer cards, and then we'll uh, have a moment of prayer. Uh, Bob is asking that we keep him. Lost your, lost your voice. Well, well, we'll get it. There we go. Right. Pray for Bubba. He's got foot surgery at the end of August, <laughs> which is not that far away. <laughs> um, this is a card from Susan Stover, thanking God for keeping Wayne and the other bicyclist who rode 500 miles across Iowa. Wow. Oh, my. Yeah. Wow. Now, how cool and comfortable has it been in Iowa last week? Oh. Yeah. Uh, she uses the phrase excruciating heat uh, along the beautiful, beautiful countryside of Iowa. Not, not, under, not mistaken, that is the longest, oh, that's the oldest bicycle race in the world. About 50,000 people ride across Iowa, or try to ride some part of it. Oh, Wayne, you are stronger than I am. <laughs> Endurance, courage. <laughs> Celeste Fozzi uh, praises Nancy Slade's hip surgery went well. That's very good news. She's hoping to be back in church after her August 10th doctor appointment. We pray that is indeed so. So we say to Nancy Slade, hip, hip, hooray. I know. I know. Pretty corny. All right. Some, some definitely um, significant prayer concerns. Let me share with you two or three of them. This is from Halo Pelrecki, praying for Colleen Blanchard, uh, who had a liver transplant. Uh, it was successful, but yesterday she had, uh, and yesterday she came off the ventilator. But then last night she had to go back on it. And now they're talking about perhaps having to have a trach. Um, prayers for Colleen Blanchard as she tries to recover. From Ken Franklin, uh, asking prayers for Lillian uh, Net Nettle, that is the, the granddaughter of Ken and Deb Franklin. She is having a health crisis. Prayers for healing and protection by the Holy Spirit. That would be appreciated and cherished. Prayers for Lillian. Susie Stewart is lifting up what Don mentioned earlier. Prayers for the Williams family, for all those who knew and loved Lori, as the deal was such a difficult loss, but a great gain in heaven. A great gain indeed. Yes. Yes. Carol Arnett's her aunt and Bob Romance, the uncle, as she uh, was a part of this church. Um, I'll just lift up the fact that Jan Lurkey is back in the hospital as of last night, uh, hoping that it is a short stay, and she continues to struggle with her health issues, but she has to be back there for at least uh, some treatments. So I know I don't have to beg you and urge you to pray for Jan. I don't have to kind of beg and encourage you to pray for these other prayer concerns. That is, uh, please God, always who we are.
people who instinctively turn in prayer. Would you um, just come acknowledge that we're in God's presence as we pray? Tune our hearts, O God. Tune us in that uh, your spirit is recognized, that we don't have to wonder about our relationship with you, that because of Jesus we know who we are. We are in Christ. And God, we acknowledge you. We give you thanks for your spirit. Tune us in that then we also are paying attention not only to how you are working in our life, but you are at work in the lives of other people. Tune us in that we will be sensitive to how we can be a part of not only praying on behalf of other people, but being used by you to not only be examples, but to be hands and feet of Jesus. God, we need courage for this world. Living here in this, um, our circumstances of our life without you would be overwhelming. But with you, it is indeed what you call us to. There are times, oh God, we acknowledge that our spirits kind of wilt under the heat and pressures of life. Sometimes the burdens that are on us seem to be more heavy than we can carry. But perhaps, oh God, we forget that you are the one that carries us. And so the burdens of our life are doable, they are bearable, because, oh God, our confidence is in your power, which is stronger than even the death that we sometimes might fear. But, oh God, we are in this journey from start to finish. God, encourage us. Indeed, give us the patience that Brother Don was talking about in the Scripture this morning. Steady us when we might just kind of want to give up and quit. But God, keep us on this path. Keep us focused in this journey. We are the people of endurance. We are the people of faithfulness. Oh God, we pray for those that we've lifted up this morning. For families that mourn, it's hard. For families that face other crises that can overwhelm. Hear our prayers. Even as we pray like Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We've got one more song we're going to sing to worship the Lord. Let's all stand up and sing together. Let's sing. Praise Him, you heavens and all that's above. Praise Him, you angels and heavenly hosts. Let the whole earth praise Him. Praise Him, the sun, moon, and bright shining. Praise Him, you heavens and waters and skies. Let the whole earth praise Him. Great is my word. Great is glory. Great is mercy. King of heaven. Sun, moon, and bright 
for being here to worship the Lord with us today and receive this blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Have a great day.